Hello Year 4 and welcome to part 2 of today's reading session. So we know today's focus is all about retrieval, retrieving that information from a text. But we're doing that a bit differently today because we're going to look at a specific question, which is going to be the true or false question. Now this type of question will give you four different sentences that are from the book and it will ask you to tick whether they are true, whether they are correct, or whether they are false, whether they are incorrect. But this is where you need to be careful because lots of times the false sentences can be very close to the real sentences in the text. So you need to really read them carefully, try and find them in the text and think, does that match up to what the text is saying? And if it doesn't, then it's false. And if it does, then it's true. We're going to look at one example together today. But we're going to use the text from yesterday to help us because lots of your questions today are you, well, all of your questions for your independent task today are using today's pages. Um, and I had, I had run out of things to ask you from today's pages. So we're going to go back to yesterday and think about the text from yesterday to help us to answer those true or false questions. So says here, tick one box in each row to show whether each statement is true or false. Now, I didn't get this bit in the, in the question, but often it will ask you to look at a specific page. And this question had asked me to look at page 154. That will help me to figure out whether each statement is true or false. Now, first of all, I need to think, what are my key words in my uh, in my question. Well, I can see that actually I've got keywords such as one, just one box, not both boxes. If you ticked true and you ticked false for the same statement, then you're not going to get a mark because your reader, your marker, won't know which box you meant. So you are looking for true or false. And it's really important that you understand what true and false both mean. So just have a moment what does true mean and what does false mean? Pause the video and have a think. Okay, did you come up with some definitions? You need to be really clear on what true or false means. So if something is true, it means that it's accurate, it's correct. But if something is false, it means that it's quite inaccurate, it's quite incorrect. And we're going to think, well, what statements have we got today? And are they true or are they false? So my first statement is, the bang sounded like an erupting paper bag. Mm, okay, second statement, Max was crouching like a bear. Mm. Lila was trying to persuade Max to come down from the tree. And the sparks from the heat of the fire caught at Lila's face and Max's skin. Now, none of those might jump out at you for being false. And this is where we really need to read them qu uh, carefully because the ones that are false are very, very close to being true. But there might be one word that's different. And this is where we need to use our retrieval skills to get the correct information from the text. Now we're gonna start by reading from the top of page 154. And when we see a statement in the text that looks like the one that we've got in our box here, we're going to just pause, read it carefully, and see if it matches our statement in the table. Does that sound good? Okay. I need your help because when we come across a statement, I'm going to read it out loud, you need to stop me and say, Miss Newman, stop, because you found a statement that matches one from the table. Okay. Fred and Con sat on the raft below, Con holding Becca in both hands, watching, coughing as the smoke thickened around them. Now, none of these sound like my statements so far, so I'm going to keep reading. Max was crouching like a sloth. Ah, oh, Miss Newman, stop. We have found one of our statements because we know here we've talked about Max crouching too. Now here I've got Max was crouching like a sloth but in my table it says Max was crouching like a bear. So actually we can see that they've changed the animal here because a bear is not the same as a sloth therefore that one is false. I'm going to keep reading. With his arms and legs wrapped around the branch Fred squinted up to see Lila crawling along the branch talking to him, coaxing him, trying to untangle him, her body shaking as she moved. Nothing there to tell me that that's in my statement from my um, table, so let's keep reading. Max had stopped crying and was now rigid-faced and completely silent. Now you might see my head keep turning because I'm constantly looking from the text 
on my screen to my table on my screen because I want to make sure that I'm getting it right. The first flames appeared, snaking along the path from the clearing. The heat sent up sparks, catching at Lila's skin and Max's feet. Oh, I've seen that before. The heat sent up sparks, catching at Lila's skin and, Ma and Max's feet. I've got this statement here. The sparks from the heat of the fire caught at Lila's face and Max's skin. Oh, so that's true. No, Miss Newman, it's not true, is it? Year four, help me out. Why is this statement false and not true? That's right, because it talks about Lila's face and Max's skin. But in the book, it talks about Lila's skin and Max's feet. So that is incorrect. That is false. Thank you for helping with that one. Let's keep reading. There was a bang, like an erupting paper bag. Ah, oh, we know there was a bang. And here we can see the bang sounded like an erupting paper bag. That's the same as this one. So that one is true. Well done. And below them, seed pods exploded in the heat. Jump in, Fred shouted widely. Just jump in and we'll come and get you. There was only smoke now. Smoke and the sound of Lila calling to Max, singing to him, coaxing him desperately. Now, we've got this sentence here. Lila was trying to persuade Max to come down from the tree. Well, what does this word coaxing mean? We learnt that yesterday. Fantastic coaxing means that you are persuading someone. You are gently and persistently persuading someone. And we know that Max was in a tree. Now, although this statement isn't directly coming word for word, we know that definitely Lila was trying to persuade Max to come down from the tree. Because look, it says here, Lila calling to Max, coaxing him desperately. So that one is true. So now it's your turn and it actually gives you a page here, which is helpful. So it says, look at page 155. Again, tick one box. Is it true or is it false? So I want you to read it and identify is it true or false. So pause the video here. Can you do that now, please? Okay, so let's look at our keywords. So we know we're looking at page 155. How many boxes are we ticking? Just the one and we are looking for true. What does true mean? Correct. And false, which means uh -uh, incorrect. Well done. So we're going to start reading then. So two bodies plummeted down into the river. Well, we know that we have got that here. Two bodies did plummet. But was it Fred and Con? Ah, uh, it was. It was Fred and Con. So that one is true. Then we can keep reading. They landed in an eddy of water and the current swept the two of them too fast into the middle of the river where there were rapids. So there's nothing to say there that that's in my um, table. Fred squinted through the smoke. Their heads did not resurface. Take the pole, he said to Con. Oh, so I've got here that Fred told Con to take the stick. That's wrong. He said, oh, that one, that one was before mine, but he said to take the, the pole, not the stick. So that would be false. But if we keep reading, we can see here that a body smashed into his and he grabbed it. It was Max. So here we can see that Max's body smashed into Fred absolutely that one is true and then we can keep reading and now we have the statement where it says take the pole but in my to in my boxes it says to take the stick now that one is false and finally then if we did keep reading we could see the part where it says you had to gently cup their chin in your hand and i can see that that is true is it true no, it's not, because this statement says you have to cup their head in your hand if someone is drowning, but you must cup your chin, their chin in your hand. So that is false. Thank you very much for that year four. You helped me out a lot with that. Now, you have got two, bo uh, two tables to fill in with true or false statements, and then you've got some more retrieval questions here, which are based on what we've already learned, okay? So that is your independent task for today. A final plenary today. If you're unsure on whether a statement is true or false, how could you use the text to help you? Mm, pause the video and have a think. Okay, so if you don't know whether a statement is true or false, what can you do? What do you think? That's right, what you can do is you can read the text from the top to the bottom slowly. Really keep looking back and forth from the text to the question, to the statements that you have. Really reading them word for word. If you think a statement from the text sounds very like a statement from your table, read them word for word and think, is this true or false? Am I retrieving correct information or incorrect? Okay, so that is your task for today. Have a lovely rest of your day. 
Bye, you four.